Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel. Let me check if everything is okay. Is the sound okay? Do you hear me well? Do you see me well? Because I made some changes um, since the last lives. I made some changes and that's why uh, uh, when I started the previous one, there was a disgusting echo. I hope it's gone for the start of this light. You should hear me well, you should see me even better than usually. At least, uh, not that it became much more beautiful, but at least you should be able to see me better. All good for Mikey Mazzarese, so that means that we can start. Probably I was a bit too close to the screen. All good, all good. We are waiting for you, Beppe, Yusuf. But I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> Where do you want me to go? Guys, normally today should have been the pre-game of Juventus versus Monza. Coppa Italia game of tomorrow. Of course, we can take a time to speak about that, but we have important things to speak about. I already anticipate you in this morning video that today there was the shareholders meeting with four important points. How many members they would be, we already knew. Who they would be, we already knew. But two other things, um, how long they would stay and how much they would earn. I don't know about how much they would earn. Pro uh, I didn't see it. I don't know if they said it publicly, but I know, how <coughs> sorry, I know how long, three years, okay? They have a mandate from now until three years, probably until the end of the season, 2025, June, 2025, which is a middle term. It's not long, it's not five years, it's not short, it's not one year, and already with the length you can already know that there is something significant already there, because it's not just like, okay, we are here for one year to clean up the mess and then we we, we go away. No, then everything can happen in life, of course. But uh, I anticipated that there were some things that would have been said, and today four people spoke, Pavel Nedved, Vice president of Juventus, or actually we have to say ex-vice president of Juventus, Andrea Agnelli, president of Juventus, also him from now on, ex-president of Juventus, Gianluca Ferrero and Scannavino, new president of Juventus and general director. Guys, there were some things that were super crucial and super important with the four of them. Super important to start to understand what Juventus will do. I wrote a few things. Uh, I listened to it, of course it's already a few hours, could have made a video immediately, but I prefer to do first the, um, the watch along of the Supercoppa, won by Inter 3-0, it is what it is, uh, they deserve to win. But here we are, to speak, instead of doing a video that I will probably do tomorrow, I didn't want to do it today because I had mixed feelings. Before saying hello to the people in the chat, I had mixed feelings because, I'm not lying, and uh, people that uh, call me sometimes a ass licker because Andrea Agnelli was the boss of Juventus, now that he's gone, uh, I'm not a ass licker anymore. But um, I have immense respect for Andrea Agnelli. Immense, immense, immense respect. I'm a big fan of him. I will not go to all the things that he did, that he won 19 trophies in 13 seasons are a lot are really a lot. He started with a loss versus Barri. He stopped with a loss, and what a loss, versus Napoli. If you are speaking about first team, if you are speaking about all the teams, there was uh, still Juventus women that had to play and they did a 1-1. They were not able to win. Not a single team was able to win in the last weekend as president of Andrea Agnelli. Uh, but he left and I really want to say thank you to him. I started to work for Juventus with him as a president. So... I will be forever grateful for what he did, being there at 34, 34, I am 41, some of you are my age, some of you are a bit older, a lot of you are much younger, some 34, some not even 34, guys, arriving at a first club, Juventus, to manage it in a club that is in a difficult situation, when you are 34 without football experience in management, I mean, wow. And what he did was incredible. And that, that's why I will be forever grateful. Was everything perfect? No, it is impossible in 13 years to do only perfect things. It doesn't exist. In whatever company you go, 13 years of presidents of dominance are long. And it's impossible to do everything uh, right. But he did a lot of good things. Really a lot. I believe that he will remember except of some 
part of supporters that are against Andranielli, except of that small part, will be remembered as one of the greatest ones. For sure, the most winning ones, because this is not an opinion, it's a fact. It's a fact. Most winning president, <laughs> but um, one of the greatest ones for Juventus. Um, and that's what I wanted to say about Andranielli, but we will go with his words and then to the to the new to the new Juventus. So first of all, let me say hello to Elio. Mamma mia, look at that, look at that, look at that. We can uh, better. Huh? I like it. I like it. Ciao to Elio. Ciao to Stavros. Ciao to Bogdan. Uh, Bogdan said, "Let's see what the new management will be able to do." Ciao Marvin. They have clear ideas. This is something I already anticipate. Ciao Marvin. Uh, uh, Tomsi, grande Tomsi, this is a way better subject than the previous life. Eh, the pre previous life was not uh, not fantastic, especially not with the result. Ciao Zlatsko, the new beginnings. Ciao Beppe, I believe that you will grow alongside our Juventus in this new era. I am always enjoying this night show life. Me, personally. Hey guys, uh, I was expecting when Andrea Agnelli at a certain moment he, he, he was speaking about 120 seconds about people that helped him in these 13 years to make Juve grow. And big, he spoke about Antonio Conte, Allegri, uh, Pirlo, he spoke about uh, a lot of people, not only there, but also the ones that were taking care of marketing, the ones that were taking, whatever. He said thank you to everyone, he didn't mention my name. Guys, uh, I'm just doing Twitch, I'm just doing Twitch, so I don't know if, uh, no, I'm sure they will not go and call me Beppe. Look here, there is a promotion for you. This is absolutely not the priority. Ciao Dard. Sorry if uh, this is a dumb question, but I don't know about any of this. I'm aware that the team is going through some stuff. But since we got a new board of directors, does that mean that we have money to spend? Is it, no, it's not a dumb question. It's a good question. Look, uh, just to recap, maybe because I'm, I'm always going with Everyone knows everything about Juve, but not everyone knows everything, especially if it's off the field topics. Small recap. Uh, apparently, you know, until the board resigned, they resigned publicly on the 28th of November. But of course, they had to continue working until today where there was the pass, the pass from X management to the new management. And uh, today you have a new board of directors. These people are not owners. These people are not shareholders. They can potentially be shareholders, but no, these people are the ones that will manage Juventus as a board of director. Okay. They will take the strategies, the visions, for the long term, they will take care of defending Juve in all the investigations we have. They will choose the new sporting area or maybe keep the one that is now in place, even if it's nearly impossible because we are missing some people there. But they will not put money in. They will manage the money, yes, but these are not the people that will put money from their pocket. They will try to generate more money. Who can put more money? Well, you have the ownership with John Elkan, that is a shareholder that has uh, more than half of the shares of Juventus. And then you have all the other uh, shareholders. But we already did this, and this is not the plan to do it again. So no, there will not be an entry of money out of nowhere to go on the mercato. Important. Ciao to Gian. Carlo Graniglia, somehow Juve will always have the money to spend this termer. Mm -hmm. Marian, uh, two lives in a day. Yeah, but the other one had absolutely nothing to do. And I really wanted to take a moment also for the people that are watching in replay to, to speak about Juventus only, not at the end of another life going randomly and speaking about, uh, about the important topic that we, we have to cover. And I can tell you there are a lot of topics that we have to go through. Let me just to one thing first, because we will go and explain everything that has been said with uh, underlining the really important words that have been said today, because you can already start uh, understanding strategies and priorities and so on and so on. So, uh, Giancarlo, without the salary of Alexander and Rabiot, Juve should have plenty of money to spend this summer. Well, when they are actually, um, when they are actually going to buy, to sign new players, the saved salaries, you, ha you have to put it in two brackets, two different topics, brackets. You have a financial sheet, and in this financial sheet, you have the entries and the spent money, okay? 
two different things. Uh, entry plus minus for spent money. Well, you have, for example, I'm just saying uh, employee expenses. This is how you call it uh, financially, employee expenses. In these employee expenses, you also have players. Well, these players, uh, you have different brackets. You have the salary, salary mass, and then you have another line who is actually the uh, value of the player, how much you pay a player, you know? So it's actually split. It's not because you save on salary for Alexandro that you will have more money to, to buy a player. No, you are saving in salary. You have a salary tot. That means, for example, I'm just inventing, huh? your tot of salary for the next uh, three coming years are 100 million, 100 million, 100 million per season, okay? 100 million. That means if you save 6 million for Alexandro, you will be at 94 and you have 6 million for three players, two, 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 for one player, but you can't go with a player for 7 million because then you are overspending. But it doesn't mean that with that money, you will have six minutes to put in the other bracket to do an investment on a player because this is totally different. So no, it's not correct what you are saying, but it was a nice try. Ciao, Peniel. Grande. We uh, are ready, just waiting for you. I'm here. Ciao, Mikey. Ciao, Ninib. Grande. I changed the picture again. Grande, Nib. I like that picture. I really like it. Ciao, Dan Avola. Grande. Fino alla fine. New era. 18th of January. Where are you, Bep? I'm here. Ciao, Jurki. Ciao, Pal. Ciao, Mikey Mazzarese again. I am really curious to see how this new era of Juventus will play. I tell you, if you really want to see the first decisions and so on and so on on the field, you will have to wait until the end of the season. Before that, you will not really feel the changes, but you can already see some things. Ciao, Beppe. Just saw I missed the reaction live. Gladly, I'm here. Yeah, but you didn't miss anything. We spoke about Inter that one, and uh, we were all depressed. Uh, ciao, Yusuf. Ciao, Paul Ibarra. Hmm. Nestor, tutto a posto, Peppe. Tutto a posto, tutto a posto. Gravuj, you did the rock elbow like this. I bro, uh, lucky one tomorrow we eat Monza. Ciao Del Baggio, ciao Joe. Uh, a lot of people, guys, it is like that. And normally you go, we go fast and we enter the topic. I like to take my time to speak with you. I'm sorry, it is what it is. Ciao Sasha. What a picture, Sasha. What a picture. Eh, Sasha. Sasha, Sasha, Sasha. Maximum of light. Let's go. Guys, this is Dave from Turin Giants. They will be together with me tomorrow on the Juventus Twitch channel. And if you are not there, if I see that you go to the other other streamers, I'm pissed off with you. Guys, we are on the Juventus Twitch channel with Dave, with Dash, with me. We will be three tomorrow to do the watch along. It's for free, Twitch. Go join us and have a maximum of fun because you will see some young players. You were asking for young players. They will be there tomorrow. Eh, if I don't see you tomorrow saying at least hello, I'm pissed off. Then you choose where you go. But at least you come and you say hello. Eh, Luca, very excited for Monza tomorrow. Ciao, Beppe. I'm glad you are live again. Let's go. We start. We start. So, First words of Andrea Agnelli, um, important is that he's leaving the presidency, you know about that, uh, you know about that, this is a fact, that was actually the point of today, but it was already public, he's leaving the presidency, he will take some days of holiday, okay, he need a bit of vacation, I believe that everyone needs a bit of vacation after everything that happened in these 13 years. If there is someone that needs vacation, is Andrea Agnelli to have clear mind. But to have really clear mind for the next steps, what he also did was stepping aside from the ones that are having a word, deciding in Exor and also in Stellantis. This is really important. This is really important. For you, you will say, Beppe, who cares what is... No, we care. We care. Because Exor Stellantis, they have a word in what Juventus is doing, what Juventus is saying. Him stepping aside from everything is actually reinforcing the decision why he is leaving the presidency of Juventus. Stepping aside and being free of everything. Free of everything. Why? Because he said, after a few days of holidays with my family and so on, I want to start back to kind of being ready again with a blank sheet, with a blank paper, free to do whatever I want. The first consequence of it was Andrea Agnelli going after today's meeting 
to sue uh, an Italian journalist, Italian journalist called Zigliani, that his favorite hobby, it's a jo journalist under brackets, his favorite hobby is speaking bad about Agnelli, about Juventus, and so on and so on. For the people that loves gossip, if you want to know, it's a journalist that was living in Italy, it's an Italian one that is now living in Portugal with his wife. Back then, in the 90s, well, his wife cheated on him with Paolo Montero. And from that moment on, he hates everything that is against, or that is linked to Juventus, whatever. He hates you. He hates Sasha. He hates Dave. He hates Del Baggio. He hates Mark, Marvin, Starboy, Luca. He hates all of you. Andre, Koshik, everyone. Because you are linked to Juve. You are Juventini. He's spreading lies blasphemy and this and this and this about Juventus. Look, a lot of time we blamed Juventus to not reply, to not answer. Anthony Trimboli as well. He hates you. Yeah, yeah, of course. He hates you. Um, <coughs> we blamed Juventus to not reply, to keep things silent and so on and so on. From the moment on that he was free of any responsibility in Juventus, he goes and he sues him. A lot of time we asked Juventus to do it against that journalist, Zigliani. He did it. That's a sign that also him didn't accept it. But he didn't want to put Juventus in the middle of another story while being president of Juventus. He wanted to keep Juventus aside from these kind of gossip stories and so on and so on, not putting Juventus in a bad light or in another court or this and that. And that's the first thing he do. He says, I'm going on holiday. Instead of going on holiday, the first thing he does is sending a message to him and noticing him of the soup. And that's for me a really, really, really great thing. We can speak about that with more details in a second. What else did he say? He says that everything he did in all this year was for Juve, with his heart. He was really emotional also today, really emotional because I believe he didn't want to leave Juventus, but he understood it was really the moment of leaving Juventus for everything that is surrounding Juve, enemies and so on, investigations and so on and so on. He leaves Juve with a painful heart, of course. But he continued to say, and that's a really important one, that hopefully, I believe it's in March, can be wrong, okay, I believe it's in March, there will be in the European court a decision towards the dominance of UEFA, that football is recognized as a business, as an industry, and not as a hobby, not as a simple sport, because it is an industry. And pointing out that UEFA has the monopoly, the dominance of this. If you want the truth, I tell you the truth. Thank you for reminding me, Bogdan. If you want the truth, I tell you the truth. He uh, says that there is a big risk of continuing continuing to decrease the importance of all the other leagues, Serie A, Bundesliga, La Liga, Liga, that will become more and more and more feeders leagues for only one league, at the profit of one league, and it is the Premier League. I not always agree with uh, Garganese, I don't always agree with him, but he showed something that I totally agree with him. Let me go back on uh, his tweet. Uh, where is it? He did it yesterday, if I'm not wrong. Let me go back and try to find it. Mm. Here is the tweet. He said, Carlo Garganese, January transfer window spending. Premier League, 320 million euro spent. 
until now, because we are only on the 18th of January. La Liga, 19 million. Bundesliga, 16.9. Ligue 1, 10.6. Serie A, 6.7. Yesterday, I was about to start making a video. And uh, you know that I looked for who the uh, Italian teams bought. Berezinski, Napoli. And then one from Roma, I don't even remember. Yesterday I, uh, I searched, I studied yesterday, but I forgot. Anyway, forgive me that, but it was actually a free transfer that was already there. So some people, sometimes they ask me, Beppe, do you believe that an Italian team will be able this year to win the Champions League? Put aside every single possible miracle. No, no, not today, not tomorrow. Real Madrid in a few years will not be able to win it anymore. Barcelona neither. They have already difficulties to come back on the level that they were years ago. Not only Barcelona and Real Madrid, but we are speaking about all the clubs, even Bayern Munich. And so the only one that will maybe be able to compete will be at a certain moment the Paris Saint-Germain. With a lot of new entities that are entering the football world, where UEFA, the regulators, that have all the monopoly, the monopoly, they have the dominance, they have everything on them. They don't care and they don't care about the consequences of what they are creating. We are by far in a different period as when Italy was doing it in the 80s. It's totally different. It's different as when Real Madrid was doing it with the Galacticos. We're speaking about isolated things here. We are speaking about something that is already sad today but will become even more sad in the future because there are some new rules that will be applied by UEFA. They are saying for the good of football that you will be able to spend only 70%, 70%, 70% of what you are earning. Okay, everyone equal for the law, 70%. But if today you are earning 1 million and Premier League is earning, I don't know, 7 million, no, let's say 5 million, 1 million new, 5 million uh, Premier League. Let's say that you are increasing, you are working hard and you reach 2 million, you are doing 100% growth. Now, if Premier League is growing with 100%, from 5 they are at 10, the gap will be even bigger because if today the gap is 4 million, in 5 years the gap will be 8 million. So you see, it's really difficult Mercado is totally, totally out of control with sums and prices, tags, price tags that are out of control that nobody understands why and how. Salaries will be really difficult to reach. So all the talents will be attracted towards that Premier League. We already spoke about that so many times, so many times, and it makes no sense to continue speaking about it. I don't know if Super League was the best format but i can tell you that it was one of the only solutions brought by some people and signed by also a lot of team i watched also the documentary on apple tv uh, that uh, confirmed what i was saying but guys if you are blaming your club that you are supporting taha Barcelona, we have people, Cody Gakpo from liverpool we have people from inter from milan on the channel juventus and you are asking your your team to do better, to, to buy, to sign great players, whatever you want to, it, it's impossible. It's impossible at high level. You will compete in your league with the teams from your league, but you will not be able to compete on the European stage, except of some miracle season where all the stars are aligned to say it is your year whatever happens it is your year you are playing versus one team they have a red card they are out and you go through you are playing versus another team they have a uh, three injured big players and it's your year and you go through it's a var decision that has not been seen and you go through except of these kind of things or a magic night where you are playing just better football like we saw Cremonese and Napoli of yesterday, for example, or Torino, Milan, or uh, Parma that was about to eliminate Inter. Anyway, these were words that he said. Uh, and then he also said something uh, uh, really important. He said that in five or eight years, he clearly see um, the first team, our first team of Juventus, made of 50-60% of the players 
made from our youth sector, our next gen, and so on, uh, and, and the rest. It's big. It's big numbers, 50, 60 percent. So, of course, it's not only the starting ones, but you have to take into consideration 25 players. On 25 players, 50 percent, it's 12 and a half. The half is probably Pinsolio because he's coming from the youth, but he's never playing. Uh, Juventino MC, we spoke about uh, Agnelli swing Giuliani. We are still in the Agnelli talk, but we started with that. How important that was. And it's not only yeah, because we have wait for Ferrero, wait for Scanavino, because especially Scanavino said some important things. So wait, wait for it. But 50-60%. Why? Because it's impossible to go and buy Anthony Mudrik, to buy Casemiro. It's it's over. It's impossible. In the back then, a few years ago, we were able to go in Bundesliga to buy a Vidal. That was already showing some things, but it was not the mega phenomenal. But for a normal price, tomorrow it will be impossible even to buy a Vidal. Impossible. Because the other clubs, they said, we have a talent here. If it's not this year at 10 million... We sell him next year for 50 million. We take the risk, 50 million to an English Premier League team. And then it will be really impossible. So that's why 50, 60% that for me, of course, it's a lot, it's exaggerated, but it's because you will have no other choices. I was about to do a video yesterday. Uh, maybe I have to show you on IFTV Instagram. Let me go to Instagram of IFTV. Wait, huh? because there were some words of uh, of Mourinho uh, here. How do we find quality? Well, by growing the young boys. We have to find solutions because we can't go and buy Mudrik for 100 million euro. It's not that you want to have 50-60% of your youth. In the past, we never did it. But one of the dreams, of course, is to have like two, three players from the youth academy. Why not? Five players in the first team. It's beautiful. It's really nice. Here we are speaking about 50%. It's not a nice anymore. It's because at a certain moment you are just obliged to go for that. Because there is no other way. So you will have to not find them really young. But you will have to actually, you will have to reproduce them. You will have, a, you need a laboratory, laboratory when you are growing them in your own house, just to speak. Find them at five, six, seven years, creating these youth academies around the world. What Juventus is doing, because people, they don't speak enough about what Andrea Agnelli, what Andrea Agnelli's Juventus did in these years. Youth academies all around the world. Toronto is one of the latest ones that, that exists. You have some in Belgium. You have everywhere in USA and so on with uh, Brazil, I believe, as well, where you have uh, these academies. Why? Because you have these small young kids and they are working all together with Juventus. They can already tell, attention, we have someone here. You just bring them. You bring them home. So that's the idea of what uh, we, we, we will try to do. If 50, 60 will probably not happen, well, we are not that far. Eh? Even 35, 40% is already a lot. Uh, he doesn't live in Italy. The, the journalist now is living in, uh, uh, in Portugal. UEFA is massively corrupted. Yes, yes. But uh, FIFA as well and so on and so on. Mm. I still believe passion and masterclass can beat money, but the problem is when they can bring people from the bench without quality loss. Five steps are too much. Passion, passion and tactical masterclass can beat money. Yes, but not at the long run. Not at the long run. Can beat you in a game. In a away and a home game, yes, can beat you a season. But at a certain moment, guys, if you have a well-managed, because I'm speaking about a well-managed, but it's all for the coaches. Eh? The best coaches will also follow and try to go there in the 20 teams of Premier League. Well, if they have the best infrastructures, the best stadiums, the most money, unlimited budget, because they don't care about profit or not, if they have 
zero regulation from UEFA, so that means it's far west. They can do whatever they want if they have the best youth sectors, the best academies, the best uh, players that wants to go there because there is an appeal as well. Look at Chelsea with three players per role and they continue to spend three players per role. When do they play? When do these players play? Well, you can have uh, the best master classes you want to long run, you lose. Anyway, this is a, a long discussion. So he spoke about young teams, but you see that the intention of Juventus to continue with that project is real. Is real because it was repeated by Scannavino a bit later in the new Juventus. It's real, but it's also because of necessity, out of necessity. Expensive players doesn't mean they are better. It's true, Thomas, I totally agree. But the problem is that you will not be able to buy a good one anymore because the good one will be overpriced and you will be no, you will not be able to buy him. Anthony is not worth 100 million euro, but it's a good player. Darwin Nunes is not worth 100 million euro, but it's a good player. And these players are over... Look at Vlaovic. Honestly, between you and me, Vlaovic is not worth 80 million euro. But Juventus, they tried with a crazy move to go and spend that money on Vlaovic because if they didn't, in the summer, he would have been gone to another league, to Premier League. Um, Ciao, Romeo. Is Caio George? Yeah, in uh, February, we'll uh, go with the uh, next gen. Uh, bottom 10 of Premier League will be stronger than the top three clubs. Yes, 100%. 100%, yeah, and probably also some, uh, if we continue like that, some uh, Premier, uh, what's the name of uh, first division teams in, in UK will be stronger than the other ones. Eh, of course, because you have three that goes down, three that goes up, you have to think long term. Anyway, this is something that uh, um, we will see, the championship. Anyway, this was Agnelli saying goodbye, suing Zigliani and saying goodbye. Will he come back? Can be. But not in next year, not in two years, but he, he could potentially come back. So let's see. Uh, grazie to Andrea Agnelli. We go back, we go to Nedved, really short, really short Nedved. He was really emotional. He said that for him, Juventus uh, was his heart, more than a club, more than a football club. 20 years spent in Bianconero colors that he loved first on the field then off the field passionate was he perfect no like Agnelli was not perfect Nedved was not perfect but Pavel Nedved he had one thing guys that I wish all of you to be he has that authenticity he was who he was uh, on the field he was angry when he was losing he was angry off the field when he was losing of course, you have more responsibility than when you are a player. When you are vice president, when things are going well, you can sometimes control them. When things are going bad, you can't control them at a certain moment because everyone is a human. So authentic person, Nedved, that really cared and loved about Juve, said thank you to Andrea Agnelli. He said, uh, not always we agreed, and probably referring to uh, Massimiliano Allegri, but he said that we became even more friends with all the discussions that we had and so on and so on. So thank you to Pavel Nedved. Um, that I was sad when I saw how much he was uh, under the target of some Juventini when they had nothing else to uh, to speak about. This was really sad for me, at least for me, guys. Um, to see a legend like uh, Nedved I mean, doesn't mean because you are a legend that you are untouchable, but sometimes how we are uh, uh, treating them for no reason. It's strange. Uh, Amer, an average player now costs you 50 million euro because he can go to Nottingham Forest for that price. Perfect example. Look at Botman. Look at Botman. He was that close to go to Milan. He decided to go to Newcastle. Uh, clubs will wait for these offers from the English league and you can't really blame them. They need the money. But of course, Perfect, perfect. He's still young. I'm sure at some point, uh, some capacity, he will be back. Ah, Andrea Agnelli. I, I believe as well. 
but you never know. Angry Zebra, our strategy is developing the next gen to reduce the salary and we don't have to pay expensive player transfer. This is the only strategy we can do because UEFA doesn't do anything. Yes, correct. And probably, <laughs> and probably <clears throat> we will sell them. <clears throat> probably we will sell them to the Premier League. I would not be surprised to see one day uh, Please confirm me yes or no if uh, if it's happening again. Otherwise, I will have to buy a new microphone. Um, I would not be surprised if one day Federico Chiesa goes to Premier League easily. Or Emiretti, or Fagioli, or uh, Mbangula, or Ealing Jr. going back. So these things can, can happen easily. Um, wait, I need a bit more... Uh, better... The audio is fine for Sasha. And sometimes it happens on YouTube, then you have to refresh, guys. Uh, look, Sasha is okay. Um, I wait a bit more info. Yeah, McKenny. But McKenny is it's something different, uh, of course. Please fix it. Marvin, refresh. Please refresh. Please fix it. Wait. One, two, three. One, two, three. Wait, it's I think audio is good. Vito is saying the audio is good. So probably Marvin, uh, please fix it. Uh, audio is good. Sound is top. It's good. It's good. So people are saying it's good. Then uh, Di Santo and Marvin, you have a bad connection at home. You refresh and you are back. Anyway, we go. We continue for the people. Um, so on Ultra Bianco Nero, Anthony Trimboli uh, became a member for the sixth consecutive months. And he's saying, make Serie A great again. Uh, I, you, you will be sad, uh, Anthony. And I know, especially where you're living, how much you care about Serie A. Much more than a lot of people. Well, uh, I'm sorry to tell you, but it's Serie A's fault. It's Serie A's own fault. I don't blame Premier League. Premier League, look at the stadiums. Look at the grass. Look at the... Television, right? The language, English, that is international. They don't need translating, blah, 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 blah. They go, they speak their language and the world understand them. They are great in marketing. So I'm not blaming them. I'm blaming Serie A because we slept, because we were okay, because we do internal wars instead of thinking together and going and, and, and creating again that superiority. But it's too late. It's too late. You can't. It's over. It's over. Who wants to spend money? Speaking about television rights, I'm speaking about marketing, big money to show the stadium of Cremonese. Did you see the photo, the picture of the stadium of Cremonese? Did you see the pictures of the stadium of Cremonese? show you I can show you let me try to show you can I go and show you give me a few seconds this is uh, the level that we are speaking about this is the level that we are speaking about this is Serie A this is Serie A my friends I'm not even speaking about this is Cremonese. You will tell me, but normally it's a Serie B team. You want to see the picture of uh, of uh, of Napoli? You don't want to see them. You know them. If I am marketing, I don't want to. I don't want, and I'm sorry to say to our Napoli friends. Uh, Do you think it's do you think it's normal? No, but now sp let's speak seriously. Do you think that this is normal? Do you really sincerely believe that this is normal? That someone sane in mind is doing these kind of things. With all the respect. Do do you really believe it's normal? I work in business, in management, in fashion, commerce. This is not normal. This is not normal. Guys, 
you have some strategies, okay? You have some strategies to grow your brand, to find new entries, okay? New entries. Or you have a really great product, a really great product, where you buy some depth. This is, guys, this is how it works. I'm sorry. This is my job. You buy a lot of depth. That means that you are never out of stock and you are able to sell it in different points of sales, okay? Buying depth on a great product. Then you can find more points of sales because more points of sales you will have potentially new customers that you are reaching. If, for example, you are not available in Argentina, for example, well, that great home shirt of Napoli, try to find an external partner that is reselling that stuff, not that one, the normal home shirt of Napoli in Argentina. More entries, you lose a percentage, but this is what you do. You try to grow your fan base, thanks to social media, thanks to entertaining football, thanks to victories, thanks to iconic players, for example, from a certain country, and so on and so on. You are growing your data, but that's another strategy. Some people, they are, what they are doing also is creating more. More with less depth. It's a strategy. It's the strategy where you say, you will create that sense of urgency because people, they will understand that if you buy now, you have it. If you don't buy it, it's gone. It's gone because we produce it just one time, limited edition. You create a sense of urgency. People want to go. They want to go on the side. They want to buy it. Okay. They are creating this. You, you want to know why they create this? This awful Halloween, Christmas, and St. Valentine shirts. You want to know why? I tell you, wait, we need Conte here. If you want the truth, I tell you the truth. If you want the truth, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. The truth is that Napoli, I'm sorry if I have to uh, speak bad about uh, some friends that are supporting Napoli, but the club of Napoli they decided to make some money on the only legend that they had that just passed away. This is the truth. Legend passed away and they made Maradona shirt. Doing a Maradona shirt, why not? It's a beautiful gesture, can be a beautiful shirt, will be sold super hard. When you are making six in a season, you are not honoring the memory of someone that passed away. You are just doing business, okay? They made business. Last year, they had 13 shirts. And if I'm not wrong, they had six with Diego Armando Maradona. The problem is that they didn't even ask the permission. They just did. This year, they promised the fans to have, again, 10, 13 shirts to sell. Not only the fans, they promised it, but also they had agreements with producers. They had agreements with the sponsors, with everyone to produce that quantity of shirts. The sponsors, the producers, they don't care who you put on. The problem is that the family, they said, what are you doing? De Laurentiis. We never gave approval for putting Maradona there. We don't even give approval to FIFA to have Maradona to play in foot. What are you doing? So they lost, they can't put Maradona on the shirt, but they promised. The problem is they don't have a marketing service that is taking care because it's fashion. It's not football, it's fashion. So what are they doing? They go on uh, Google and with a PNG, they go and they, and they create a shirt because they promised their sponsors and their producers that they would pre create 10, 13 shirts. They are mocking the people with this kind of atrocity. If you don't believe me, it's super easy. You go on Google and you do Christmas PNG. Wait. Christmas dear PNG. And it's here. The one that they used for their shirt. The one, it's here. It's here. It's this one, guys. 
It's this one. It's this one. It's this one. They they have just adapted one thing and it's this one. They just go there. Guys, I can do it if you want to. I can do it. Anyway, so speaking about, because we didn't even speak about the new Juventus, it's already 45 minutes that I'm in a rant because I'm pissed off. Uh, no, they made it with uh, with uh, Photoshop, but uh, but it's the reality. This is this is what they did because they 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 have absolutely no long term vision. They have no long term vision. But it's not only Napoli, yeah, guys. Because now I'm laughing because it's the first example I had in mind because it's too big. There are so many bad managed teams in Ligue 1 in La Liga, in Serie A, but especially Serie A, because that's the one I know the best. Hey guys, uh, this is not normal. Anyway, uh, wait, because uh, uh, Mohamed Youssef, thank you, really appreciate it. He said something important. He said, Beppe, Italy has the history and the ingredients to be the second best league. But internal wars between Italy club and media has to end first. Unfortunately, Mohamed Youssef, it's part of the culture. I, I, I am Italian myself, but I raised in Belgium. So I'm not 100% one that is Italian from, you know, because I raised in another country. So influence from other part and so on and so on. But Italian culture, it's really something that we see more and more, by the way, not only by it in, in Italy, but more and more, it's a culture of we prefer to shut you down than to take you as an inspiration and try to reach and surpass you. Guys, this is... Unfortunately, it will not end. It will not end. Because everyone is thinking about their own ego, about their own pocket, and they don't see the long term. In Italy, they don't care about long term because they said... Today we are president, in five years, no idea who will be the president. We don't care, we don't want to take collectively. The most important thing is that we are doing our thing and we think about ourselves. And with that kind of mentality, you will never reach Premier League. But uh, you, are, you are correct, we have it. We have the good weather, we have the passion, we have the history on our side. We have big clubs. It's not like Paris Saint-Germain with only, like Ligue 1 with only one big club, even if Marseille also had their problems. They are not reaching that level. Uh, Bundesliga has only one club. Spain has two slash three. Now Atletico since a few years, but before that, they, they were not there, then they are there. Depends, but two historical teams. Italy has a lot of competition, more probably than the other one. So it's a pity. What, what, what do you want me to say? Um, wait, attention, because it's not over. Mikey with another one, and then we Rudolf, Rudolf, Rodolfo, indeed. Uh, ciao, Michael Filetti, mon ami, my friend, Michael Filetti. Strange, yeah, these kind of things. You see, with my new uh, things that I tried, when I put uh, like this, it's okay. When I do a donation, it's like uh, uh, transparent. It's nice. You see, you can see, you can see my bald head around the name of Mohammed Youssef. Look at that, fantastic, fantastic. I love it. I love it. Marian, the family was pissed off uh, because they didn't pay rights to do that. Indeed, of course. They, family of Argentina, they have uh, uh, kids all around the world. They have to take for some, we know, some they are hidden, nobody knows about them. Um, uh, Mr. X, ciao Mr. X, they all agree on one thing, hating you. Oh, of course, that, that that's one thing that they, they, they agree on. Bundesliga too, some mid-table teams are run like amateurs, but at least they have nice stadium atmosphere. Yeah, thanks also to 2006 investments, but uh, yes. To be honest, not many teams have a vision in uh, Serie A or have uh, a poor executed end over the last few years. I would include it, Juve. Sucks to say, but look at where we are now. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, but Juventus, look. And then we go to the new Juve. Please, let me go to the new Juve after the message of Mikey Mazzarez. First I go with Michael, then I go to Mikey. Uh, 
I speak too much, then the coffee is cold. Then the coffee is cold. Uh, Sebastiano Zagnolo linked to Juve soon. Eh, of course, this is a cycle. It will never end. Um, well, Juventus, they understood really quickly. You had, you couldn't. You couldn't do it in Italy. It was over with Italy. So Juventus, they tried to go out of Italy, expanding new fans, new entries, bigger. Cristiano Ronaldo, why? Not for the Champions League, it's a lie. Would have been the cherry, the icing, of course, but it's a lie. It was not the first priority. The first priority was growing database, growing fans, potential people to buy, to give you new fresh entry because the roof was hit in Italy. The problem is probably with Juventus that at a certain moment, the one the will to go faster and faster and faster made you take risk more investment that would have paid at the long term probably covid is slashing you due to that you enter in a in an affair that is making you making mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake after mistakes your own responsibility so we are not here to blame covid huh? the first thing is probably you want to run faster that you were ready to run for. That's the first. That's the first thing. Because you were thinking about the Premier League, because you already anticipated what is already happening now, and that will be even worse in three years. That if you didn't act now, it was too late. So you tried and you invested too much. Youth Academy, now we are happy. Now we are all happy. Miretti, Fagioli, Ilin Junior, Mbangula, Nonge, Kenan Yildiz. Investment, guys. Huh? The other clubs in Italy, they said, Ooh, what? We have to pay? Ooh, no, no. Women team, boom, Juventus. Then the other ones now are starting. Hey, there is a business there with women. Let's try. Let's try. This is this is a uh, this is the reality, guys. Uh, and then we made a lot of mistakes. Um, wait, Mikey. And then I want to speak about the future Juve. I see that Colo is there, so I will read the message of uh, our friend Colo. Um, but first, Mikey. Let me try also with my bald head on the message of Mikey. The uh, it seems like the other clubs in Serie A are happier when Juve lose than when their own clubs win. The league is stronger when all teams work together. Well, this is what they tried also to do with L'Assemblea in La Lega. It's a meeting within all the presidents, but it's more a fight than something else there. It's Italian, it's passion, it's screaming, yelling, they don't care. Uh, but yes, how many times did we see the other teams celebrating Juventus losing? instead of celebrating their own. The problem is that they never win. So what do they want? Hey, people, they need to celebrate one uh, sometimes. So, but thank you for the donation, Mikey. Really appreciate it. And I agree with you. I agree with you that uh, um, people are, are, are happier when you lose. But this is also part of growing and being the biggest and the strongest club in Italy. Because if you are nobody, nobody cares about you. It's sad, huh? it's sad, but it is a reality. Who cares that you are winning one time? You are nice, you are nice. Atalanta, everyone loves Atalanta. Of course, they never win. They play beautiful football, they win a game, they hear, oh, attenzione, attenzione, Gasperini, mamma mia. Everyone loves Atalanta. The fable, the magic in Europe, Gasperini ball, fantastic. Wait, if they start winning 10 times in a row. Wait. And then we will speak about uh, if Atalanta, they are liked or if they are really disliked. Anyway, this is what it is. Colo is saying, Beppe, if Juve would finish uh, tomorrow, which Serie A team would you support if you had to pick one? Colo, nobody. I'm 41. I am 41. So if, and it will not happen. <laughs> But if, look, really easy example. When Juventus went in Serie B, I didn't watch uh, Serie A. I didn't care. I didn't watch. I didn't want to watch Serie A. When Juventus was not in Champions League, because of the scandal, I didn't watch Champions League. I said I watched Champions League again from the moment that Juventus is back in Champions League. So for three years, I didn't watch any single game of Champions League, not even the finals. 
But I didn't care. I didn't care. If you tell me, of course, that Juventus is gone, there is no Juventus anymore at all. It doesn't exist. But probably I will watch uh, another league. Probably I will watch another league. No, I, 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 it would be difficult for me to, uh, to support another team in, in Italy. I would say easily Palermo because I'm Sicilian, but I don't care about Palermo. I don't care about Palermo. So really it's difficult for me. Nobody. You, nobody. Really nobody. Uh, Marcello is saying Anderlecht. Hey, hey. You know, you know I, I went to buy, a, I went to the store of Anderlecht because you, you don't believe me. Sometimes you don't believe me. I think it's really sad sometimes. Uh, look, I didn't post it on social media. Maybe it's time for me to, to show you something. Um, wait, wait one second. Wait, I will show you in a second. And then we go to the new you. Mamma mia, one hour. We didn't even speak about the, the words of Ferrero and Scannavino. Disaster. Today it was a rant. Huh? Rant, 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 rant. Uh, wait, wait. Un secondo. Un secondo. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? How is it possible? Where is it? No. Ah, here it is. Okay, download. Mamma mia, these guys are scaring me. Um, after the, horrible, after the horrible game of yesterday, there is only one thing that we can do. Well, starting supporting our club from the town. After the horrible game of yesterday, there is only one thing that we can do. Well, starting supporting ah, our go. club from go. the wait, town. Wait, wait, wait. I need to put the sound. After the course. horrible game of yesterday, there is only one thing that we can do. Well, starting supporting our club from, from the, the town. town. Anderlecht. After, after the horrible, horrible game of yesterday, there is only one thing that we can do. Well, starting supporting our Club from the town, Anderlecht. After the horrible game of yesterday, there was only one thing that we can do. Well, starting supporting our club from the town, Anderlecht. After the horrible game... I went uh, to the to the store of Anderlecht uh, because I need to buy some shirt for uh, for someone. So that's what I did. But I will not support Anderlecht. Mamma, they are really a disaster. Anderlecht is really a disaster. They even lost... Uh, they will. They even lost today again. Indeed, Michael. Probably yes. Probably yes. I would do G. Just uh, I don't know football or whatever. Um, the video has echo. Ah, we don't care. Uh, it's okay. We. It's not important. It's not important at all. Maybe wait. Let me try it again. Like this. No. Down. After the horrible game of yesterday, there is only one thing that we can do. Well, starting supporting our club from the town. After the horrible game of yesterday. Here we go. Here we go. Now you heard it. Eh? Now it's over. Basta. Basta. Um, G just Celtics. No, I hate NBA. It makes the, that sport makes totally no sense. Can we go to the future of Juve, please? Can we? Can we please go? Future of Juve. Two person spoke today Ferrero and Scannavino Ferrero is the president Fer Ferrero is the president um, Ciao Cecilia Ciao Cecilia again Ciao Jose Angel Ciao Daniel Ciao Jonathan Murray Itza Jat Enric Starboy Well um, Today were two people that spoke The first thing they said Juve was Today it's not the day for questions. It's just a welcome, a hello. So there were no possibility for the journalists to ask some questions. The first thing that Ferrero, new president, said is thanking, of course, all the ex-presidents of Juventus in the history of Juve, and some of them he knew personally, thanking Andrea Agnelli, and then he starts saying, that his first out goes towards the Tifosi. 
the supporters. And this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Attenzione. He said, the supporters have always been the strength and the heart of Juventus. He listened, since that we knew that he would be president, he listens to Tifosi, to supporters. Some close to him, Juventini, he is a Juventino, and you could really see it in his face. He is the number one Tifoso, a supporter of Juventus. But he said also, the supporters, they looked lost. When I spoke to them, they looked lost. They looked worried about the future of Juventus. And that's important. That's really important. Because he decided to start with that. Then words are words and we need to understand with the facts. But he could have started in a million ways. He didn't. He chose to start with the supporters. The strength, the heart of Juventus. That he heard them. He knew. He heard. That he knows how they feel. Lost, worried. What about our future? Colo 99. He's saying, Beppe, what if Juventus would disappear tomorrow from planet Earth? Well, some people are really, really worried. Some people, they message me every single day. And I tell you, basta, stop. You can write me, of course. But don't ask me every single day the same question. Did you see that paper speaking about it? Yeah, I know. I, I know. I read the papers. So, calma, tranquillo. Uh, he said that he will give his best, his max, to build the future of Juventus as good as the past. At least as equally good as the past, and we have a beautiful past. Uh, because we are the strongest team in Italy. Then he said, we have, and we all know them, a few challenges the next months. But we have the experience and the determination, the will to defend Juventus. We will do it with determination, with expertise, but without arrogance. The only thing that we are demanding is equally being respected, equal respect from everyone. That's what Juventus, that's his first demand. He's promising. So he starts with basically three things. He says here, the first one, he put Tifosi fans at the center, one, two, <coughs> telling them that he heard them. Guys, if you don't want to do anything for supporters, you don't mention it. You just don't care. You go through something else. But he's taking it. He didn't promise anything to the supporter. Except that he will make from Juventus as good as what it was in the past. Okay? That's what he said. But except of that, he brought it up on the table. The supporters are worried and lost. And they don't have to worry. That's one. Two. That he will defend Juventus and that we created already a team of experts to defend Juventus. The third is not asking favors or whatever, is asking equal respect. And this is what we were just talking about a bit earlier with all the people in the chat, that people hate Juventus in Italy and in the world. Well, he's asking equal respect. If we are guilty, write that we are guilty. If we are not guilty, because there is a process, don't try that we are guilty. Don't start making already the process before the court has decided to call you up. This is what Juventus is asking with uh, Ferrer. I will go back to Scannavino, that for me is even more important what he said. A really important one. But Ferrero, according to me, emotional. He was really emotional. You could really see that he is a supporter since he's a kid and he's arriving as the number one at Juventus. So I'm sure that I don't, I don't know what he will do and how he will do it. I don't know if he will be a good president or not. But one thing I can promise you, and the eyes are not lying, is that he will do things with his heart for the good of Juventus. Then it can work, it can flop. Alan Yedrian. And let me know, guys, in the chat what you thought about Ferrero, before that we go to Scannavino, your first impression of Ferrero. 
that I can show you the picture if you are hesitant what he's looking like. Uh, wait, because here there are two pictures. Um, that's the one we are speaking about. Here he is. Gianluca Ferrero. Gianluca, look, guys, guys, guys. Looks like me. He looks like me when I when when Juventus told me that I uh, was uh, the host of Juventus. Look, he looks like me. The same, exactly the same. Eh, fantastico, fantastico Ferrero, fantastic Ferrero. Anyway, uh, what do you mean Ferrero isn't the best? Good, he's sixty or or even older. What do you want uh, him to look like? Ferrero isn't the best good, uh, looking guy, but then again, neither was Agnelli. Uh, Starboy, didn't he used to have long hair? Uh, yeah, he went to the hairdresser, but with a hair. Um, so what, what is what is Allen saying? Fantastic Ferrero. Ferrero. Intellectuals, ciao grande, just got here of uh, juicy titles, what's going on? Well, we are just explaining about the future of Juve. Hornet, I like the first interview from Ferrero. He was talking very clear without hiding the challenges that are in front of Juventus. Hopefully we will, he will show us facts, not only words, but something tells me that this board of directors can defend us in a professional and respectful way. So, Allen is speaking about something totally different. Ciao Beppe, now with the new management, do you think we will go in the market at least for a fullback? It's a question that a lot of people are telling me. We didn't speak about... Mercato in today's uh, meeting, absolutely not. We we didn't speak about it. We spoke about, and that's what we are going through. We so spoke about the words of Agnelli. Of course, he would not speak about Mercato. We spoke about Ferrero, emotional Ferrero that uh, gave you Tifosi at the center, defending Juve. These are the challenges. He didn't speak about the challenge versus Monza or the challenge of the Mercato. He spoke about the challenges of the field. Um, and then you have Scannavino. Well, thank you for the nation, Alan, by the way. Really appreciate it. We try, we try to go for someone on the right. Don't expect crazy things, but we will try. Ex especially because our friend Quadrado, um, we were expecting him versus Monza. He will not be there. We don't know about De Ciglio. Disappeared as well. Uh, even if he started training as well with the team. But eh, something has to be done there. But you need to sell. The priority, may, be clear. Guys, the new management is not there. It, it's hurt. What I will tell you will hurt you. The new management is not there today on the 18th or 19th of January to go and take care of the sporting side or short term the management is not there for short term sporting side and this is why Max Allegri is there with Cherubini White apparently according to the rumors they refused the dismissal of Cherubini, for example, we don't know about Allegri, because they have more important things to do. And it is fighting, defending Juventus from all the attacks. What is, and honestly, try to think about it, what is the point in defending Juve, or no, what is the point in going and buying Three players to make Juventus strong if you are not able to focus on defending Juve and at the end they will send you in second division. You will even invest money and you will lose money in reselling this player because you are obliged because you are going in second division. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. No. Uh, money wasn't the problem in Juventus. It was the management. More or less, yes and no, done. Done. Mahir. More or less. Uh, you're speaking about the same management that did fantastic things. You're speaking about the same management that did mistakes at the end because of money, because of big investments and because of financial losses that were even 
more put in the picture because of coronavirus. And from there on, avalanche, snow, snowball effect, and you're going to into making big, big, big uh, mistakes. One after the other, bigger and bigger and bigger to cover the other mistakes that you did. So yes, it was it has always been money, guys. If you have infinitive money, you don't care about it. Anyway, that's another topic. Um, so no, but then that doesn't mean that we will not buy any player. But I already told you on the videos, the five person that are here are five person that has no idea about football. They have the same idea or expertise of football than you and than me. Okay, they never work in football they are expert in managing a business what does that mean lawyers to defend in court and then you have other people like the one that we will speak in a second scannavino that is expert in growing brands with putting strategies but not strategies of mercato, of football, in growing a brand because you like it or you don't like it. If you want to go into the streets with a flag, the people of the sport, the sport of the poor, invented by the rich, uh, whatever you want to, it is a business. We are in 2023. It is an industry. It is not a hobby. Hobby is you with your friend when you are playing outside your home. Okay, it's you in amateur league with uh, your dad that is uh, having a beer belly. This is hobby. This is fun. We don't care. ASBL in Belgium, Association Sans But Lucratif. It's a company without profit. Okay, you have entries, but not to make profit. It's actually a hobby, a hobby. Uh, you can live with it, you can have a salary, but it's not to make profit, okay? It's an industry, it's a business, okay? When people are saying, and this is the thing, one of the things I hate the most, we lost our identity because we changed the logo. This is the problem. Bring back the old logo. Hey guys, you are living in a fantasy. You are living in a fantasy. You are living in a fantasy. Today, by the way, Agnelli said it. He was looking behind him. He said, I wanted to see if the logo is there. He goes, yes. The logo is important. And the logo will not go anywhere. Forget about it. Old management, new management, it will not go anywhere when you will hear the words of Scannavino. I see that some people are leaving the chat. And it's a pity that you are leaving. It's a pity because the words that we will try to in investigate, detective, understanding the future of Juve, they're important if you want to understand Juventus, the new Juventus, and what already has been said today. Because you can read them, but it's not the same. It's not the same. I love the old logo. I really love the old logo. Can we show the old logo? I have always heard the old logo. A portée de main. I decided in 2023 I would speak more and more with French words because I have a really vast vocabulary, not in English. So if I have them, why not speak about it? I have this. I have, I have even older logos, but fantastic, yeah? Fantastic logo. I love, I love it. I love it. I love it. It's part of my culture, my DNA, my history. I grew up with these kind of logos. But... But, unfortunately, it was a logo that Juventini loved because of the history, because of the attachment, because it represents Juve in your mind. I know <coughs> that your generation, younger generation, this one is Juve. For me, this is not Juve. It's Juve, of course it's Juve. But for me, my logo, my logo... My logo is this one. My logo is this one. Okay? This is my logo. This is my logo. 
this is the one I grew up with. This is the one I was the most attached to. And from this one, they go to this one. Which will tap, 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 it's a minor change, it's a minor change. It's a minor change, you have the still the oval, you have the word Juventus, you have the, the zebra or whatever it is there, or, uh, the horse or the, the, the bull, I don't know. Uh, you have the crown, you have everything. No, it's not the same. It's not the same. It's an evolution of a logo. It's the evolution of a logo. So my logo is the, the one, then we change. Wait, because I received the message, it's important. Wait. Wow. Uh, you know what? I had inside information, guys. Someone on the official Inter channel gave 500 subs as a gift because they were happy they won. Mamma mia. Someone on the Twitch channel of Inter not one, not ten, five hundred. Wow, he was happy. He was really happy. <laughs> Uncle Sharma rich these days. <laughs> I don't believe it's Uncle Sharma. Uh, I don't know who it is. Mamma mia. Uh, wow. Wait, let me take a, a picture to say... Uh, I don't know why I'm doing the duck selfies, no. Um, it was not a bot, guys, seriously, crazy. I have no idea. Um, eh. but, but some people are telling me that they are missing working with me because I was professional. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. Anyway, we go back because I don't care about Inter. Uh, Inter buying fans. Yeah, actually, that's what they did. Uh, that's what they did. Then, oh, uh, Alan, good question. Huh? Um, good question. Could be that we go for a player uh, last minute. Okay, let's go to Scandavino. I was interrupted. Uh, I was interrupted. I was interrupted. Graphic designer here. The new logo is amazingly beautiful. I like the new... Oh, we were speaking about the logo. We were speaking about the logo. <clears throat> the logo has a meaning. There is a why. I like the new logo as well. But I am someone... My personality is... When there is change... I first start with... Wait. Before saying that... Ah, the new Itali Italy logo, logo. The new Italy shirt. How many... Why? I don't like, I don't... Wait, wait, wait. It's evolution, of course. Split the emotional part first. First you split, of course, you'll fall in love because of emotions, but split it first. Don't compare. Watch and give it a chance before. Anyway, I like, I like the new Italy shirt really a lot. I like the new logo of Italy. Why not? Is there an immense difference? Not even. Anyway, the new logo is a commercial. The new R logo is a commercial logo to reach new 
markets to go wider with apparel with apparel you can go out with something with a double j with a logo while in the past the logo is is not something that you want to put necessarily when you are casually going out we're trying new markets opening and we go to the words of Scannavino, it will be more clear. He was already appointed and he was already active. You already saw him at the stadium. You already saw him at the men team, the women team, the next gen. He already visited a few times the offices. He was already active since two months. Scannavino. And who is Scannavino? It's the person that you will see here next to Mamma Mia. What did I do? No. No, 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 here, it's the, the bald person here, next to Gianluca Ferrero, it's the general director. Scannavino is the one that will actually make sure that the business will grow. One is president, takes all the responsibility on everything is the last one that decides if there is something to decide he will also lead the five members of the board including himself and then you have scannavino scannavino will take all the decisions basically <laughs> scannavino will be the one that practically will operate the club his intention is to grow the revenues to decrease the money that you are spending Saving cost, increasing revenues. You will tell me, Beppe, where is football in all of that? Well, today, football is a consequence of your business. If you have a fantastic business that is working, you will have a better team and that better team will bring you better result. If you have a good team, but it's really bad manage at a certain moment you will collapse and you will be not be able to compete anymore these are the first thing what did he say he said really active two months already where i met a lot of people a lot of motivated people not only staff allegri joe montemuro cherubini um, and all the people that are taking care of women but he said also the people behind the scenes that he met already and he said the next gen is a strategic and extraordinary project. That's the first thing he said. So again, after Agnelli saying that in five or eight years, we'll have 50, 60% of our youth academy in first team, he's starting with the next gen is a strategic, strategic and extraordinary project and they are already telling me that not only the one that you already saw in first team but there are people are already queuing in our youth academy and we are speaking about under 23 under 19 but also under 17 15 and all the other ones so you have already unknown talents ready to go up and that's a really great one then he continued saying the main objective from the sporting side and as a club, as a business, there are no changes. On the field, success with financial balance. So we have to be in balance with our finances and having success on the field. Nothing changed. This is the main objective of Juve. But we have to enlarge the Juve fans. We have to become back bigger. Bigger, bigger, more fans, more fans, adding on top of the one that are already existing. We don't want to cancel supporters, but we want to add. And he said, young and international. So guys, today we have 149 people that are watching this channel. Remaining humble, remaining humble. And it's a fact, it's not because I'm good or not, but in numbers, I am the biggest channel of Juve that speaks English on YouTube. At the moment, tomorrow, it can be another one. Today, it's my channel. We have only 449 people. I do 
lives at 1 a.m. in the morning because I'm thinking about US market. Market. People that are living in US because I could have done it in Italian and probably I would have a lot more followers today. But I wanted to do it in English for people that do not speak Italian. I did it three years ago before working for Juve because I had the same strategy in mind going with the people that do not speak Italian because I want them to live Juve but do you think it's okay to have only 150 only 150 people watching a live that is speaking about the future of Juventus it's not we are million Juventini internationally only 150 are watching this life about the future of Juventus. And I believe that I am someone that I know the thing that I'm speaking about. I'm not going by heart. I read, I listen for hand, I speak Italian. I can tell you the truth about what has been said, not changing or going towards what I want you to understand and, and, and lying. But I really can tell you, we have 100. 50 people um, and Juventus they know I am on the Twitch channel of Juve we have 250 people yesterday we were there even later we didn't have enough people according to me this is not normal for being Juve why is it of course I understand because we are in a new generation thing where people have TikTok fast information, long lives are boring. So we have to find things about that. But also because today Premier League is more attractive because people are speaking about Premier League because Serie A is not attractive because Juventus is doing bad result because we just lost 5-1 versus Napoli. Um, this is this is a reality, guys. I'm not blaming you. I'm thankful for 150 people because you're taking of your time to be here together to inform yourself about Juve. But it's not enough. And that were his words. Next gen, we continue, but we want to enlarge because somewhere we failed and we have to bring people to Juve. Young generation international generation with new project and also with new communication team i can already tell you i don't know if you watched or not but tiktok has already changed tiktok has already changed the way of communication on juventus on tiktok go on did you see these changes on tiktok did you see it super important did you see already some players recently on the juve twitch channel in italian wait Wait, maybe next Monday. I'm just saying that. Wait next Monday. We are going already towards a different thing. There are some people that tell me, Beppe, you need to read the comments. So let me go with the comments. Um, and then, wait, uh, did he say something else important? No, these were his words. Uh, but I will tell you something. So I love the logo, blah, 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 blah the beautiful crest, uh, legendary logo, black and white stripes with the logo on it. That's our logo. But it still remains our logo. Beppe, do you see Zidane as a coach in the future? Yeah, why not? Uh, give some likes. Grande. Uncle Sharma is rich these days. If one day I will win to the Lotto. Thank you, Marcello. I'm sure about it. Ciao, Beppe. Ciao a tutti. A little late. Eh, you missed a lot. Uh, the new Italy shirt look is beautiful. Wait, uh, what can I... How the, how much does Juventus store help the club? Every time I need something, I search the store first. Uh, Keychain, scarf, gym. A lot, a lot. Because Juventus, they also took a strategy with, um, with Adidas. Adidas, you have to know that one of the strategy of Adidas or from the brands is actually to pay a fee to the clubs and they say, this is your fee, I'm just saying, and this season, 6 million, and we take care of everything. You have to take care of nothing. We have our selling points. We give you a part so that you can sell in your own stores, but we take care of it, of everything. Produ production, deliveries, and so on, and so on, and so on. 
we also take care of your site by Adidas, stock, and so on, and so on, and so on. Well, Juve, they said years ago, eh no, eh no, we don't want these six millions. We take care of everything, or at least for our part, of course, if they sell Adidas to, I don't know, uh, whatever, big change uh, malls and so on, it's for them. But everything in our stores, we have one in Roma, one in Milan. We have one, no, we have multiples in Torino. Plus online, all of this is Juve. Juve, Juve, Juve. Of course, Juve pays the material to Adidas. Juve pays the design and so on, but the rest is for Juve. So buying from Juve is much more better for the club because you have a bigger percentage of entries. So Juventus took a risk because, of course, if you fail, you have less. But Juventus have the right to sell their own and to manage their own way. So that's good. Um, Bayern is an example in a lot of things. That's correct. What do you want, Mark? You should reply to the comments. I believe, maybe I'm wrong, huh? maybe I'm wrong, uh, but I believe that I'm one of the only channels that is uh, not going with a lot of guests because I want to speak only with the chat. But Mark, uh, if you ask me, Beppe, do you see Zidane as your coach? I already answered to that question. And it has absolutely no no added value, your question, when we are speaking about Scannavino, that is speaking about enlarging the database of fans. So it's not because you have an urgency to understand if uh, Zinedine Zidane will be the coach of Juventus, which I'm speaking nearly every day about. If you go on YouTube... Uh, if you go on YouTube... Zidane G just Juve uh, you see G, you, Zidane back home with the uh, extra names more than this I can't do Juventus Zidane and Marotta back with a big question mark and then you see that in every life we are speaking about Zidane PSG risk about Zidane with uh, Pogba you have Zidane I speak about Zidane every single day even here I spoke about Zidane so I speak about Zidane every single day you can find look, look how much I speak about Zinedine Zidane uh, no, don't tell me that I am. Don't answer to the fans, to the question of the fan because then you you make me angry. I didn't answer your question because your question was not relevant here. And even if I already said, and I said, Zinedine Zidane, do I see him at uh, Juventus one day? Yes, yes. But it makes no sense to speak about him today because the coach is Allegri until the end of the season. No, it, then it irritates me because the only thing I do is replying to people. Otherwise, I, I do a video, guys. Or I uh, I, I go with some guests. Uh, no, then it, it, then it annoys me. Anyway. Um, Mahmoud, we can say uh, something like sustainable development. Man, we are obliged. We are obliged. Beppe, I'm so drunk right now. I miss Dybala. Mamma mia, another one. Another one. Ooh, Jordan. Mamma mia, Jordan, what did you say? Another topic. No, I don't miss Dybala, uh, personally. I respect, of course, all the people that are missing Dybala. I don't miss Paolo Dybala at all. Uh, because Dybala is um, it's a player that you need to be two to be happy. I, I said I said it last day. He was not happy at Juve. Juve was not happy about him anymore. Ciao, goodbye. He cheated. He wanted to speak with Inter. He was not able to give his maximum at Juve anymore because of him, because of Juve. So it's always the two that are at fault. It's never just one. It's both of them. I believe it was the best decision ever. Now, if we have to to fall in love every time that Kulusevski is doing a beautiful pass in Premier League, that Bentancur is doing an interception or an assist, that Paolo Dybala is scoring a goal versus a Serie B team Genoa or a Brace versus a, a, a relegation team that is playing with uh, 10 men in the 24th minute. Eh, but then we, we live in the past. If we have to cry about the old logo every single time that we see the new one, we live in the past. Guys, Think about the future. 
not the past. And I miss Del Piero, I miss Platini, I miss uh, uh, Marchisio, I miss the midfield made of Pirlo, Vidal, uh, Marchisio and Pogba. It's over. They are not there anymore. And I believe that uh, our friend Paolo Di Bala, it was the best decision. Look how happy he is now. He took his medal and he put his medal in the, in the Museum of Roma. He's happy. He was not happy anymore at Juve. It's good. It's good. If I believe that we would have had more people... Uh, if I was speaking Italian, yes, yes, I'm 100% sure about it. Uh, yeah, 100%. Why? Because you have a, another way of consuming Juventus in Italy than in, uh, in the rest of the world. Because it's a cultural thing. Eh? It's not something good or bad. It's just a cultural thing. In Italy, from the moment that you are a kid, from the moment that you are born, you... You live, you wake up, you wake up, you live, and you go to sleep with football. You have, since ever, all week long, Sky Sport 24, that 24 hours, on seven days a week, you have football. You can just leave it there, in continuity. You have the pre-game, Hours before, you have the game, you have a show at half time, you have the second half, you have the post game. When it's over, you can go on YouTube where you have different opinions of different YouTubers. You can go on Twitch where you have, I'm speaking about today, yeah? you, can, you have Juventus with a large community because people, they don't stop at the game. They want to know everything. They want to continue. They spend their time living with football. There is no other thing. In USA, for example, you love Juventus. I'm not saying you love less or whatever. No, you love Juventus, but then you also have in the evening, you have NBA, you have NFL, you have uh, NHS, M&Ms, whatever you want to. You have these kind of sports, a multitude of sports. So people at a certain moment, they stop consuming. They have other sport. They have their own life. They have other hours. It's different the, how you consume football. In Belgium now, you start also, I see Jim, uh, in the past it was on, only 90 minuto in Belgium, but in Italy you had Processo di Biscardi on Monday and so on. You had a lot, every day, you had sport channels in Belgium. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, when I was watching Jupiler League, well, I had to wait the weekend and then there was a, there was a show in the evening and, and, and that's it. Huh? Ciao. For the rest of the week, we don't speak about it anymore. So it's different. So yes, on the other hand, I would have probably not have the same opportunities because nobody was speaking in English. Uh, so I would probably not work for you right now if I started the channel in, 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 uh, in Italian. So good and bad. Mohamed Youssef, thank you. Thank you, my friend. I've watched so many Juve channels follow. Uh, I follow some, but truly the best channel that has combination of logic, emotion, fun, and knowledge is just Juve. Love to see this channel be number one Juve fan channel. Thank you, Mohamed. Really appreciate it. You are here since really long. And attention, eh? the other ones are doing a fantastic job as well. Guys, Bianconeri's own all Juve cast uh, we had here, uh, Turin Giants. How many other... Uh, are there in English about you? These are the, the the main ones, no? You have uh, that Calcio boy that is a Juve fan. He's a bit div diversifying now, speaking about other, other teams as well. Everyone is doing their own way of doing it. Um, some I agree with, some not. But um, some decide to go with more very diverse people on the channel, some different, the, everyone is doing their, their way and they are improving. And I'm happy. I'm happy about that. I'm really happy about that. Why? 
of course, we don't always agree with everyone and, uh, and you always have a bit of competition, let's be honest. But I'm really happy about the fact that you have diverse channels. Why? Because you grow your database of English speaking UV fans. You are giving um, choices to people and you are reaching and you are educating more and more fans to be on these platforms to speak about football. I really love it. I really, really love it to, to have uh, different people. You know, some people said, yeah, Beppe, but uh, are you not scared for competition? No, I'm not. I'm absolutely not. It's, it's like television in Italy. In Italy, you have Canale 5, Italia 1, Rete 4, you have Sky Sport, you have Dazon. Well, it's like the, the football. You have Serie A, you have Bundesliga, Liga, La Liga, Premier League. Well, it keeps you awake. It keeps you alert to try every time to become bigger, to become better. And the own the competition is actually with your own. You have to be better than yourself yesterday, not than the other ones. The other ones, they are there to keep you awake. For example, if today I said, Mamma mia, I have 23,000, the other ones are much smaller, it's fine, it's funny, it's good, I'm the best one. Hey, but I'm, no, humble, trying better ways. You know, for example, here, uh, in the past, this one, this message would have been, wait, huh? and you know it because you follow the channel every time, but uh, uh, two days ago, this message would have been like this. You remember? half cut on that screen. On the other one, it would have been okay. Here it would have been half cut. I, I, I couldn't sleep about it. For days, I couldn't sleep about it. I said, it's not normal, it's not normal, it's not normal. Why am I not able to? I search, 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 search. At the end, I'm able to find it. Why? Because I want also these small things nobody noticed. It's already three days that I changed the intro of the channel with a new sound, with multiple papers in the videos. Nobody told me. Nobody told me, Beppe, you change the intro. I don't care. I try to better, better, better. This is actually what uh, the intention. So I'm happy for uh, for this. We have to be bigger because Juventini, they deserve to be bigger, to have a bigger channel. And I'm also thankful for some people like Uncle Sharma here. Uh, that he's saying, I agree with Mohammed, amazing channel, proud channel. Well, uh, are you a member of the channel? Uncle? Hey, yeah, it's true. Grande. Inter Congratulations with the win, by the way, Uncle Sharma. We were just speaking about Inter. Uh, Raul, we were saying, I will give you the inside information later. Someone gave a big, 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 uh, on the Inter channel of Twitch, they gave like 500 subs. One gift of 500 subs on the channel. Incredible. And people were uh, laughing. They said, Uncle Sharma became rich these days. Well, I said I doubt it is Uncle Sharma. But anyway, congratulations with the deserved win 3-0 today. Totally deserved. But I'm also happy with when I see people doing serious things like um, like Uncle Sharma, people, uh, Martino Puccio, or something. Some people are speaking about their team of Calcio, of Serie A, IFTV, whatever you think or whatever. Because we try to to grow. You know what I saw? It, I don't know if it will be able one day to do with the, uh, the culture community that speaks English. But the culture community that is speaking Italian, they are creating, you know, like, of course, you have investors behind it, but these investors they are creating in creating, you know, for example, La Nazionale Creators. So the Italian National Club of Creators, where you have people from Milan, Juve, Inter, Torino, some people are speaking about referee, and they are doing content together. Of course, you have an agency, they are putting money, but then you are speaking with uh, ex-players, you are doing games, you are doing this. We have a problem, of course, is the distance. One lives in Canada, the other ones live in UK, I live in Belgium, so we are really split language. It's nice, but it's also a, a problem. In Italy, they are all together. But I would love to have, you know, like uh, an agency, you know, going, sponsoring these kind of uh, content creators to make not only a show where you speak, but um, 
life, life things. You know, for example, Premier League. Look how lucky they are. They are lucky. These Premier League bastards, they are lucky with everything. Congratulations to them, but they are lucky. They are lucky. Hey, they want to do a charity game. Oh, okay, let's go. Mar Manchester, Chelsea. Look, last time I was looking, maybe Mudrich will go to Chelsea. Boom, 4,000 viewers live. And then they go, they grow, they work together. Arsenal TV invites one from Chelsea. Then Chelsea is inviting one from Manchester. That's why I don't understand why people are working uh, against each other. Work together, be happy. Be happy. Anyway, a long rant uh, about it, but it's, it's a really great... I, I wanted to take the time. Otherwise, people will say I don't uh, answer the comments. Uh... Indeed, indeed. Uh, but Bianco, I said Bianconeri is on as well, there as well. Uh, Juventus and Bobo TV. Yeah, in Italy they are big. Huh? Uh, but, uh, but every, I said, I respect everyone. I don't, I don't agree with everyone. I don't share always the same vision of doing things. But we respect and we do, uh, and everyone their way of 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 growing and speaking, you know. For example, Ben Arizona is much more negative than me. I respect own opinion. It's good to to also listen. Anyway, you just explain why I love watching you. I don't speak Italian, so I get most of the pitch info from you. Thank you, Star Boy. Pasquale, uh, Beppe, I, I miss Del Piero as well. Good for me. Do you think we can get back to being one of the top clubs in the world? Difficult. I don't want to scare people, but difficult. Why? Because uh, the gap that there is today with Premier League will be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Will we be back to be the f biggest one in Italy? We are already. We just have a difficult moment. But we will be soon be back to be, again, standards there. Future is bright in Italy. In the world. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the Juventus stock price went up 20.59 today. It's probably because of the new management. Yes, newness changes are always influencing the market. Then, uh, Thomas, I believe that in the next three years, even maybe earlier, Juventus will stop uh, with the stocks. I believe, yeah. I think it would be, football and stocks. I don't know if it works. A lot of Roma, they bought it. They bought themselves out of it. You have constraints, and that's a bit difficulty. Um, yeah, it should. Uh, Premier League YouTubers work together, no matter if they are Chelsea, Liverpool, or Manchester United fans. It's true. It's true. Um, and this is how you become big, eh? I went one day to the channel of, uh, what is it there, uh, for Matt from Tottenham. I went to We Are Tottenham. I went to uh, Matisse from Chelsea. The other one, one day they contacted me uh, from the big channel there in uh, in UK from Arsenal. What is there, District or they have a big, big channel. Uh, I don't remember with a D, that I'm sure, but uh, the rest I don't remember. Uh, I forget them. Uh, yeah, it's with IF, uh, it's with AFTV, but it's another name. I don't remember. Uh, I don't know. But it's from IFT, AFTV. Anyway, they contact me sometimes. I, I don't live in UK, so it's a bit more difficult sometimes. Uh, D -D DR Sport. Yeah, that, these, these guys. DR Sport. Um... Yeah, yeah, these guys, oh, these guys, yeah, they are sport, they can't, like, they are really fun, they are really nice, they are really great, um, they're really great, and, and they work together, they speak, they change, and you become bigger, because then you have these people that say, mm, I like this guy, also, uh, uh, Adrian became a friend of me, Adrian, Rabona TV, and then you, you go, people see you there. They, oh, he's a good guy. Let's go. Let's see. Super funny. Super funny. Um, 
yeah, yeah, these guys. Anyway, I don't, uh, I don't know why uh, competitions. Or we have to stick together. We have to play together. Uh, Pop Tart. I think with the right manager, we can win the Champions League. Uh, Pop Tart. A big ambition. Did you go on it? Uh, would be nice to see you there. No, no, I couldn't. I don't live in in UK, um, so it's difficult. Starboy, I really like the video you did with the Benfica fan. Eh, tomorrow I go. Uh, normally tomorrow I go to speak about uh, someone that you all know on his channel, and I believe Uncle Sharm as well. Uh, I don't know if he's still there. Well, probably he already went to sleep, but. Um, I will not spoil, I will not spoil, but we have to speak about someone that we have uh, uh, a link with and uh, Adrian will make a, a video about it. Um, what else, guys? What question do you have <laughs> about Juventus, uh, Futures, Canavino, Ferrero? Um, I tell you, I was really surprised by Scannavino words of understanding what he wants and publicly already saying how much young and international fans are important in that new project. Something that has been said already by Al Agnelli, but it's the first meeting and he said the main objective before speaking about club and sporting side, the first thing he said was growing the fan base, adding international and young fans. It's not bad, huh? It's not bad, huh? Especially for us. Because I want that in two years here we are doing a live for 1,390 people, not for 139 people. We are Juventus. We are Juventus. Uh, Kevin Klein, or Klein. Hi, brother. How long you think will take Juventus to win again? Napoli and Inter are five years ahead. Mamma mia, five years. Inter, five years ahead. Napoli, five years ahead. I don't know. I don't believe so. I don't believe they are five years ahead. Uh, Napoli made really smart moves. I agree. I agree. They are clicking. But Napoli is a crazy... Una piazza pazza, we say. A crazy hot uh, thing. At the end of the season, I said... If Napoli wins the Scudetto, I will say congratulations and well-deserved. Until then, for me, they didn't win anything yet. So five years ahead, phew, that's a lot. That's a lot. Then, if you fall in love with the tricks of Kvaratskhelia, uh, yes, yes, yes. They found a fantastic uh, player there, Angisa. That attention, eh? he was not performing in the beginning, he's doing fantastically well. Uh, oh, they build a fantastic team for cheap, they have not a lot of financial problems. Five years ahead, I, I think it's a stretch. Then, if you are speaking about Inter, five years ahead, I don't know. I can't even discuss about Napoli. Inter, absolutely not. They have even more financial problems at Juve. Uh, but really, problems. They have that disaster Lukaku deal. They missed on uh, on Dybala because of uh, of him. They... Um... No, guys. Guys. They are doing, thinking about uh, kinds of swap deals, Brozovic, Kestier, or whatever. No, no, they are really in bad position. Then today they won. They were stronger and of course they are they are not they are not weak five years it's maybe exaggerated uh, Mohamed Beppe why other clubs can find great ready young talents while still need to grow them because um you know we found Kvaratskhelia it's not Napoli that found 
Faratskeya, we found Faratskeya, we found Chuameni, we found uh, Holland, and for a lot of reasons we were not able to sign them. Then Juventus is at fault, but we found them, we found them. Holland, because he was so sure about himself that he wanted immediately to be in the first team, we couldn't promise him that, and we made a mistake. Let's be honest, we made a mistake, um, and the other teams were on him. And don't forget, he didn't go immediately to Manchester City. He preferred to go in a smaller team, in Salzburg, before Juve, because he wanted to be a starter, and he did really well. We missed it. We missed it. Um, because at that time, Probably we didn't need uh, we didn't need Holland. Now yes, and now look, it's a regret. If you are speaking about Caio Giorgi, we found Caio Giorgi. He was strong in Brazil. He was one of the talents that everyone wanted. Unfortunately, he comes to Juve. He break himself in two, and I don't know if he will ever reach the potential that he had. The guy, because we are not speaking about it. But bad luck. Uh, Chouameni, we were on him from that moment on. Deschamps wakes up, he understands that the player is good, he, try, he starts calling him up in French national team and we are not able to reach what Real Madrid is offering. Salavi, uh, Kvaratskelia, everything was found. Now I saw on TikTok they were mocking Juve because we, we, we thought that 20 million was too much. It's not that 20 million was too much. The deal... I saw also people, they don't understand uh, nothing about uh, the, the time lapse when it happened. It was actually a deal made with Paratici. From the moment that Paratici said goodbye to Juve, every single move of Paratici was frozen. Why? Because you saw what Paratici did to Juve. Or did you forget? Or did you forget all the damages that the post-Ronaldo Paratici did? Do? He did, did fantastic things before. He did so many wrong moves that at a certain moment you have a new management that is seeing the books and saying, Mamma mia, this is a disaster. Let's stop everything. We go with Locatelli that we don't even buy. We will pay him in two years and we stop and we, we do a deal with Keen and also him we will not pay because we have zero money. Who is that guy? Kvaratskelia. Stop. We have no money. Basta. You already did damages enough and... On that moment, you have a Kvaratskelia that uh, a year later arrives to Napoli that paid even less money, 10 million instead of 20 because it was closer to the end of a contract and it is spot on. And it is spot on. And if you tell me, Beppe, we don't discover them. No, we discovered them, but we were not strong enough to buy them. What Napoli is today. And they did a fantastic mercato. Fantastic mercato. Uh, we were on Mbappé at some points, yes, and I remember when we played versus Monaco, Barzagli and Chiellini, they went to Paratici, they said, mamma mia, what a player, bringing to Juve. And Paratici said we were on him since so long. It's impossible, it is impossible. Sometimes it's reality, and this will be more and more and more like that. And then you buy some young players and uh, they are a flop. But then, you know what's the difference? With the gap, what Agnelli is explaining since long, and nobody is believing me, and it already happened, uh, Mbappé will not be able to sign him anymore. Chouameni, neither. Mudric played uh, 50 games in Ukraine. You are not able to buy him anymore. You can't anymore. So who do you have to buy? I tell you. Dean Huysen from Malaga, 15 years old. He's now 17, he will become 18. Matthias Soule, playing at Argentina. Kenan Yildiz, for free, from Bayern Munich. And on that one, Juventus has been fantastically strong. So when you guys are telling me, Beppe, why are we missing on them? It's because we were already in that alternative phase where, except of Kvaratskelia, Kvaratskelia is a player that we missed on him because of Paratici change and we said stop to every single thing. Donnarumma was done. 
Donnarumma was done, guys. Donnarumma was a bianconero. Donnarumma was the goalkeeper of Juventus. But it's impossible anymore to go for these talents. They cost too much. So what is Juventus doing? Hey, they are going to the babies. Dean Huysen. And Bangula and Joseph Nongue from Anderlecht. Top talents. Top talents. Luis Haza. Pogba at the time, yes. But, you know, the Pogba at the time, uh, you know, was a genius move. Was a genius move. But it was an isolated move. Now, if you see how many of these names we have, it's great. Look, Kuzruzevsky. Uh, I see helicopter that is saying Kvaratskelia could have been the new Kuluzevsky if we signed him. Yes, yes, could have been. Um, he arrives at Juve, he flops, and everyone is mocking. And it's the rivals. Kuluzevsky could have been the new Kvaratskelia if he, if the if everything was going well at Juve, and it didn't happen. So Juventus was on the Kvaratskelia, but it was Kulusevsky. And unfortunately, Kulusevsky didn't work at Juve, like, uh, like a lot of players. In a moment where everything is going bad at Juve. Ealing Jr., thank you, Starboy. I forgot. Ealing Jr., of course. Ealing Jr. is uh, one of these where Juventus was on really fast. So, you see... We are, but now we will have to be, have patience. I remember that two years ago when I had one year of the channel, people were telling me we are not working with the youth. We have no result. Juventus is not believing in the youth. And two years ago, I was saying, guys, have patience because Juventus invested massively in the youth. You're lying, Beppe. It's not true. It's not true. We don't invest in the youth. We don't believe in them. They are not good. Well, no, they are good, but we don't play them. I said patience because it will come. And we are not yet at the superstar level, but we are really, really doing something fantastic there. Why didn't Marlake uh, continue with the first team? Um... <clears throat> uh, Marlake is a player that I already told you on the channel because I watched him really closely also with the Youth Academy. He's a player that I like. Uh, but he nearly never played with first team. And it's like Ealing Jr. Ealing Jr. played with first team before the injury. 43 minutes. Three games. Three games in total, in total, 43 minutes. I, I believe he played a few minutes now. Um, easy before it's a phenomenal and easy before killing them down. Look at what you are doing, some of you, not you, not you guys, huh? But speaking online about with Miretti, overrated, blah blah blah. You know that it's a third. Juve player with number of appearances this season at Juve. Third. Danilo is first. Yeah, I don't know why I forgot. And then you have uh, Miretti. Third. Third player. Um, yeah, because he didn't uh, score a goal yet at the moment. Because uh, sometimes he's making a mistake. In the most difficult position. 3-5-1-1. That position is the most difficult one. The most difficult one in football. Because there is no structure, you have to be, you have the freedom. If you, you are not even a number 10, it's not his position. And we are judging him as like uh, he was overrated. No, he did really great games. It's his first real season at 19 years old. He need to grow. Um, my favorite name, Eli. Hey! <laughs> Everything is uh, about adopting, uh, adapting in the club. Also, also. That's really important. Ciao Andratos, grande. Mark, why Marlake? Hey, you see, I answer your question, Mark. No, I, I said I heard the question. Why? Why didn't he adapt it? Because probably um, probably he was not ready to be a starter. Probably people they overrated him 
because they saw some flashes of him and he played like two times from the start and the two times he didn't really show something and we don't see him in training he comes also from an injury from in the summer and he just recuperated before the international break so probably he's not ready and probably it's also in competition with some players there on the right side offensively where we have too much because on the right side who do we have offensive because Marlake it's a 4-3-3 player on the right side above not a 3-5-2 player 3-5-2 player he flopped versus Fiorentina last year and now versus Standard de Liège if I'm not wrong well it's a 4-3-3 and in that 4-3-3 you have Federico Chiesa you have uh, Quadrado you have Di Maria you have Sule uh, you have so many players that can play in that 4-3-3 offensively up there and the competition is is huge in a 3-5-2 if he was like Ealing Jr a 3-5-2 player probably he would have stayed in the first team and this is the luck of Ealing Jr that he arrived in a moment where we had no left back we are playing in a 3-5-2 was was not the initial idea of the team playing that uh, uh 3-5-2 and saying I'm here and when he entered he was ready and that's the big difference why Ewing Jr. remains with the first team. And it costs zero euro for Juventus because you have a player there that is the sub of Kostic. It's not a starter. Well, if Marlake was a 3-5-2 player, he would have stayed with the first team. Maybe he will come back. Huh? Maybe he will come back. But I speak about at the moment. Preparation for Monza. Well, go. Let's go. Uh, yeah, and I'm happy that Dave is there in the chat because he was uh, yesterday with me on the Twitch channel of Juve and we were speaking about lineups and formation. Well, out of mind, uh, I tell you that I found 9 on 11 already because I know Allegri too much. Allegri, when he will leave, I will have some difficulties. Why? Because I know, uh, I know how he's thinking and I know what he's doing. I'm not, not that I always agree, but I know what he will do. Look, we play, and ask Dave, uh, he knows, we play with Perin in the goal. Well, this is an easy one. Everyone knew about it. Perin in the goal. Why? We know it because since Allegri plays, he always plays in Coppa Italia, the second goalkeeper. So Perin will be in the goal. Then I said, and me, attention, eh, because it's predicted lineup. Everything can change tomorrow. But I said, uh, you know what? Let me, let me open it. Let me open it so that we can... Uh, Wait, I will show you the lineups. Uh, okay. Let me open a random project. Here we go. Uh, wait up. Uh. Okay, so Perini in the goal, that's a fact. Bonucci is not there. Let's take away already the injured players. The uh, Shido will not be there. We play the 3 5, three, five 2. Alexandro will not start. We play with Rugani. Then we play with uh, Danilo. I will explain also why we are doing things. Where is Danilo? Donde está Danilo? Danilo. Danilo here. Danilo here on the left side instead of on the left. Uh, and then we have the number 15, uh, Gatti, that is starting here. Three man defense with Gatti uh, Rugani here. Then in the middle, we play with Paredes, Fagioli, Ealing Jr., Miretti, initial role, good. And on the right side, we play with the USA boy, Weston McKenney. Okay, up front we play with. Uh, where is he? 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 Moiskin and Matias Sule. This is the predicted lineups of tomorrow game. I said Perin plays, 
Danilo plays, Rugani plays, Gatti plays in these positions, Paredes, Fagioli, Miretti plays, I said Ewing Jr. and I said Sule. The only one uh, that I was wrong was McKenny because I thought, no, it was a wish. It was a wish more than a thought. I, I, I wished that we would have played with Barbieri, but it will be Weston McKenny in that role. And then I said Milik, but yeah, Milik and Keen, it's whatever. Probably uh, I, I, I was stupid. Keen was more obvious. Anyway, I said 9 on 11, I was totally right. Uh, no, Sule is not out of position. No, I don't agree with that one. Uh, wait, huh? let me check. Look at look at that. Better the comments now, eh? eh better the comments now. We can see them. Uh, Sule and McKenny are out of position. No, I don't agree, Starboy. I will tell you why. Okay, why are we playing there? I explain you and keep it in your ears because it's important. Alexandro, we know we heard about it that there is a clause that if Alexandro is playing 40 games, there is an automatic renewal. If possible, we would love to avoid it. And he's already at 19 games. Who is the other one that can play in a three-man defense on the left? It's Danilo. So Danilo starts. Then Bonucci is not back. So we have Rugani. And you tell me whatever you want. But when Rugani is playing, we don't concede goals. And he's giving at least some solidity. We are playing versus Monza in Coppa Italia. If Rugani can't start there, we are really in a problem. And then you have Gatti. Gatti that uh, he played a lot of time in that position. Okay. Bremer. Disaster game versus Napoli. He rests. He will rest and we have that defense here which makes for me totally sense then locatelli needs a rest we have paredes good we play with fagioli and miretti that's really also nice and beautiful in their own position kostic was super tired and i believe he can really rest and we have Ilin jr that already started playing a few games as a as a uh, as a sub I believe that he can start now and it makes all sense because it's a more offensive player. And then you will tell me, Beppe, why McKenny? Well, because McKenny is one of the players that probably will not play versus Atalanta in his role because we hope to recover Quadrado on the right side. He will not play there. But Quadrado versus Udinese, he played a great game defensively. And that's what he will actually do playing more defensively as he did versus Udinese because you know if you know your coach you know that the two wings are always trying if possible trying to complement himself striker or offensive defensive you see the difference between McKenney and Ealing Jr what does that mean that probably Miretti that already a lot of time played behind the striker Miretti will have the possibility to go a bit more up Okay, he will start here and they do like that. So Miretti a bit more higher than a Fagioli and Paredes here. Why? Because if we have the possibility, it will go like this really fast with Ealing Jr. going up and you actually form this. Okay, this is how you, you will line up at a certain moment. Wait, Ealing Jr. is more a wing, a winger. Okay, also... Because in certain situation, in certain situation, you will have a McKenny that will go here inside. Why? Actually, behind at the second at the second post, McKenny at the first post, Moiskin and Sule here. Why? Because you have a player like Ealing Jr. that is going with crosses. Okay, uh, give me the ball. I want the ball. Up. Oh. If he goes with crosses. Keen can take them, probably will put them uh, out, we know it, but anyway, we'll try. Or he will go up and McKenny can take them with a header. Bings, it's a goal. Here, here is uh, Mohamed El Shahali, El Tactico, let's listen, you see? With Sule that is ready to receive a retro pass. Hey, guys, for the people that are members of the chat, put a maximum of emotes of uh, Mo El Tactico, El Tactico, that is there. You see, why we're speaking about tactics? Uh, he knew, he knew that uh, he didn't need to come in before the strategy. He wants to speak about tactics. Uh, you see, 
Bing. That's the strategy. Why we are playing with McKenny there? If McKenny stays there, if McKenny stays there, then Sule goes on the wing. Keen goes here. You have a Miretti in supply with McKenny protecting, and that's the role of Weston McKenny here uh, tomorrow. Look at that. Fantastic. You go here. Ball to Sule. Sule is dribbling. Step over. One time, two time. He loves to come in. Miretti will go here. Ball to Miretti. And Miretti will put it aside, of course. Or he will pass to Keen and Keen will pass it, put it aside. And we have a problem tomorrow. Who will score? If Miretti has a, a shot air recurrency of zero, Keen of five, I don't know who will score. Uh, maybe Sule with a... A curly ball. Bam! A la Del Piero tomorrow. A la Del Piero. Fantastic. Et voilà. Et voilà. I, I told you everything. Eh? Radovan is speaking with Nano. El Tactico is here. Uh, eh, a lot of El Tactico. Uh, Reign of El Tactico. Reign of El Tactico in the chat. Uh, Milan lost today. It would I uh, know? I I wanted Inter to to lose. Or Sule could bang one. A eh, maybe Jonathan, probably probably Sule. Uh, uh, oh, who, who is the goalkeeper of Monza? I already starts having nightmares. I already starts having nightmares. What's his name? The goalkeeper is it Vicario or? Cranio, Alessio Cranio. And the last time he played also a fantastic game there versus Juve, mamma mia, prime Buffon, disgusting goalkeeper again. Cranio. Giuseppe, are we, you ready for Landuccio ball if we win 5-0? No. Uh, Landuccio, Landucci is 4-0. Landucci is 4-0. If it's 4-0, it's Landucci. But uh, no, at least 4 goals, not 4-0, because versus Borama it was 4-3. I know it. I anticipate it. Uh, uh, of course, tomorrow, if we win with 4 goals, which, guys, honestly, I expect. I expect tomorrow Juventus to score 4 goals. Because we lost versus Napoli 5-1. We want to take revenge after, you know, a bit of pride. We have a new ownership. No, it's not true. I'm lying. A new board of directors. We'll probably be there in our stadium tomorrow for the first time watching live. Uh, he already was there a lot of time as supporter, but now as a president, so you want to do well. You are playing in your stadium. You want to take revenge of the loss versus Monza 1-0. There are a lot of ingredients to say that tomorrow we should go and not stop and and kill them to say guys we slipped versus napoli but we are ready versus atalanta another reason because atalanta they scored eight goals if we score four it will be thanks to landucci i am prepared I am prepared. Mikel Arteta, the Arsenal fan is there as well. I think it's over. Huh? I think we spoke about everything. We spoke about everything. 2 hours 20. See, now it's 2 a.m. in the morning. And then uh, tomorrow morning I will be tired again. Because uh, it's always like that. I bring my son to school every morning, yeah? always there he wakes me up otherwise uh i believe he will never go to school he wakes me up and then uh that's how i do um, dino i will go on a limb here and say that tomorrow di maria starts with keen up front could be but i don't i don't think so i said sule and uh you can ask dave i said immediately sule why because the other two they they can rest uh, for Atalanta and Sule can have a chance then who knows no Danilo didn't renew yet he's a priority he will probably be the first one but not yet um, I will not sleep tonight but, but I am too excited Nano 
No, go to sleep, go to sleep. The game is uh, in a lot of hours. You have time, you have time. Um, Bianconeri, don't know if you spoke about it yet, but will there be any January transfer or no? Time will be left. Um, you can do everything. Eh? In uh, 11 days, 12 days, you can do a lot. That's not the problem. If you if you have 100 million, you can buy uh, whoever you want. Well, I mean, Arsenal, not, but uh, the other teams, they can. Um but it's not about timing, it's just that Juventus, um, at the moment, with the new ownership, they have to think about other things, not Mercato. We have a small budget, but we need to sell first. Uh, if we sell, then uh, then we can go for the right side. If we don't sell, maybe a small sacrifice will be done, but for a really cheap player, if possible, on loan. Um, Pepe, did you see the tweet about Havertz and Zidane? Um, not that I know. Not that I know. Are they two different uh, tweets or the same? Havertz. I don't know. Let me check. Latest. <coughs> I don't know which one. Specifically, OK Diario claim habit. OK Diario is already a really strange paper. That a huge 44.5 million per season offer has landed at the feet of former Real Madrid coach and serial Champions League winner Zidane. 50 years old, has been out of management since 21, but Bully is reportedly prepared to make him the highest paid manager in the world. Zidane has a firm offer from English team Eduardo Inda to El Chiringuito. Specifically, fr specifically from Chelsea, they have a coach, Potter, who leads the team down the streets of bitterness, and they are thinking of changing him. But I'm not surprised about that. Uh, of course, he had to come about Zidane, but he, he he will not go there. Both in their prime. Who are you taking? What kind of questions are these uh, questions? If we have to start uh, with these clickbait uh, things, guys, you know it's clickbait. It's because they want you to click and to be angry. Uh, no, this guy, this these kind of things, we 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 have no time for that. If we start uh, answer, these people, they know they do it. Of course, they know that Zidane is better. It's not even a question. These guys are not crazy. They are smart. It's the people that discuss with them that are crazy because they think that these people are. And if really they are at the point of even believing it, why are you taking care about these people? Why are you even telling them that? makes no sense so it two, two times you are fooled if you answer to these persons how many answered there i don't know how many but you had like 109 likes you had uh, 10 uh, quotes retreats you had a lot of replies anyway you are twice you are fooled the first one because he fooled you because he wanted you to interact and he succeeded in his mission or He's crazy and you lose your time. And you lose your time. Indeed, Locatelli says it. Locatelli is right. In the chat he said, we all know Havertz is better. Indeed. Uh, Madri is better than Trogba. And Trogba was strong, guys. Was really, really, really strong. Really strong. Um, and now, guys, I wanted to finish with something serious. Not about uh, Zidane and... Uh, Havers, I don't even know what kind of position he plays. That guy, Kai, Kai Havers, uh, Kai. If you know Kai, boo. 
I don't know. I don't care about that kind of strange guys. I don't know which nationality he is. Uh, I, it's not my problem. So imagine. Uh, now, can we finish with a good thing or not? Ah, you see, he has no position. You see, I was right. United Fire, Mommy, what a beautiful nickname. Juventus deserves to spend like Chelsea. Eh, but pff, I would, if, you know that I have a lot of contact with Chelsea fans and they are not happy. Eh? They are not happy because they are telling me that uh, their club is, uh, they are doing, they are just spending, 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 spending without any, there is no logic, just spending. Wow. I thought Ba was about to come. It's true. It's true. It's true, Starboy. In how long with this new directive do you think we will fight again? Not win, but fight in Europe. A good question. Uh, if you would have asked me when I would tell you except of miracles if we go like that never it will be more harder and harder and harder if you're telling me just fight in Europe again uh, well three years could be could be we have a lot of things to solve huh? we have really a lot of things to solve first uh, don't forget, we were eliminated in the group stages with Maccabi Haifa and with all the respect because they played really well this season, but still with all the respect, Benfica. Mihailo, what do you think about our right side? Which right side? <laughs> Which right side? We have no right side. That's, uh, that's the thing, uh, Mihailo. I would love to tell you something about our right side, but uh, if we have no, I can't tell you. Eh, that's a big problem, of course. Well, ragazzi, I, I'm about to close because I, I said everything. Cucurella. It is big, it's a lot of money, eh? A lot of money. The hair, hair care. Is it a good idea to play Fagioli since they know him well? Well, yeah, yeah, Arif, yeah, he didn't, no, why do they know, we are not playing versus Cleones, eh? we are playing versus Monza, why, why do they know uh, him well, did he play at Monza and I missed it, or is it late and I don't remember, maybe he played at Monza before, yeah, of course he played at Monza, eh? you are confusing me, Arif, you are confusing me. No, he never played at uh, Monza, indeed. No, he played at Juventus Duty, went to Cremonese. You are confusing me. Intellectuals, they played each other in Serie B often, maybe. But yeah. Uh, today with uh, with the videos, Wrexham. Hey, I need to watch the 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 episode. I need to watch. That's what I will do now. I watch an episode again because I was uh, I started. Eh? I'm at the season where the episode where because there are 17 episodes where they already bought it. The club that was in the first uh, episode, second episode was uh, they they. I was thinking that they would win. They did one one, so they didn't qualify to the to the draws to go in the upper division. And uh, so now they will start again, but they dismissed the coach and 10 players. So that's where I am now with uh, Wrexham. But guys, it's a bit strange. Huh? I don't know if uh, at the moment, I don't know if they really did it for uh, the love of, of the club or because they wanted to do this kind of uh, show. I think it's strange to film 
a guy that is crying because he had a red card probably caused the non-qualification to the to the draws to the playoffs sorry is crying and then two seconds later uh, we dismissed him because we need results this guy never ever heard about football Macchiellini and Ryan Gosling they never heard they didn't even know the first sentence they say in that uh, in that series is they explained me the rules and I liked it what do you mean you explain the rules and you like it I like the fact that you can go up and down from division yeah of course because in the other sport in USA you can't it's there you are there but Ryan Gosling and McKellini, they buy a team in Wales. And they say, hey, we, we dismiss everyone because they have to understand that we want results. Hey, great. I don't understand. They, they made it for the show at the moment, but I'm only at, season, at episode two. Or I finished two, I started three, and then I fell asleep. I don't understand. The coach was bad, huh? The coach was bad. That that's that's a fact. But what do you expect, Rexham? And then I saw the fans, they were all really, really angry, huh? Uh they were angry in the beginning of the show. They said uh, I hope they will dismiss everyone. Uh What's the name of the coach? I don't remember. Him out, uh, these players out, and they are bad and so on. Okay, these players, if they have, because they have a yearly contract, if they have no contract, it's, any, it's over, and they have to work in the, I don't know where, uh, in the store or uh, in the, in the farm. And Ryan Gosling arrives and decides to put like uh, 10 people in the farms without job in a city or a town, without any money. People, there was an old woman, she was screaming. She was saying, Don't visit Wrexham, don't visit Wrexham, go away, go away, go to the big city of London. This is what she was saying about her own town. Go away! I would never go there. It was look. She was looking like a witch. If a witch like that is telling me, go away, go away, not go to the fair city of Rexon, I would never go there. I would never go there. I would be scared. No. And then you buy a club and you never go. You are doing Sky from uh, Los Angeles. No, I didn't practice the impersonation. It's like this because it was like this. The old lady, go back, episode two or one. I, I think it's even one. The first one. You see the old lady, go oh, away. So I it's I think it's strange. Really strange. I need to continue to watch it. I will watch. I will every time I will explain you. And for the people that remains here, we do the the rest, what I thought about Rexham at the moment, at the moment, uh, Gosling, I was a big fan of him, but uh, as an actor, he's good. Huh? In this movie where he's doing uh, uh, Deadpool, Deadpool it was good, it was really good. Deadpool, what else did he do? The movie there where he's in love. Uh, when he's building a house and then he's in love, really beautiful romantic movie. So this, uh, you know, a wooden house for his lady. I don't remember then. Notebook or something like that. Really beautiful. You have to. Uh, notebook is beautiful. Notebook. Deadpool. What else did he do? Uh, when he become a really small uh, guy there. Uh, I don't remember the name. When he's really small and. Uh, in the two, there is a, a B with him. What's the name again? I don't remember. Yeah, 
He's a really small superhero. Can't remember. Ant-Man. Ant-Man. With the B in the two. Yeah, yeah. Locatelli he knows. Luckily there is Locatelli that is helping me. People are telling me Ryan Reynolds, not Gosling. It's the same. Who cares? Guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. guys. We will not uh, make a difference because of uh, a surname. It's the same. We don't care about that. Did you hear about Maldini asking Buffon to come to... No, I didn't hear that. Buono. Buonasera, guys. I will continue. I will continue you to, uh, to, to watch Wrexham. They should, they should ask me. Uh, don't spoil me. Uh, if the, if there is one that is spoiling me, I promise you I will be pissed off. Don't spoil me on Wrexham. I don't want to be spoiled. Never. Never spoil me about Wrexham. Tranquilo. From 2 a.m. to 3 a.m., this is my standard. I believe I can see two and a half uh, shows. And then I tell you. It's uh, Disney Plus. Disney Plus. No, no, Disney Plus. Star. Star in Disney Plus. Welcome to Rexon. Rexons. With Ryan Reynolds and Macchiellini, because both of them they co own the Wrexham. Yeah, it's a great show. No, no, I don't like because it looks like it's all fake. They bought it for the show and not for the sporting result. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't want to go too fast. Um, but managing from distance a football club dies, die. It's like, uh, you know, it's like having a love at distance. It's not possible. Well, now it's really over. Ciao, ragazzi. I will do, yeah, for the members only, I will do the, the Rex, Rexham, uh, Rexham uh, show. Ciao. Ciao, Filippo Rosada, Mihailo, Starboy. People are asking, go, let's go to 150 likes before we close. Hey, you see, I told you, two hours, 37, not only, not even 150 likes. Uh, we had 1,065 views, not even 150 likes, disaster. Ciao, Jim. Ciao, Acid. Ciao, Locatelli. Ciao, Mihailo, Filippo Rosada, Hornet Instinct. Ciao, Styler Z, Michel Arteta, Marcello. Bonne nuit, mon ami. Dave, see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, Twitch. Huh? Ciao, Starboy. Ciao. For a new Juve. For you. New and strong Juve.